one. Hello and welcome to this bonus edition of the Montpelier Happy Hour here on WVEW 107.7 FM as well as the internet. I am your host Olga Peters and welcome Representative Emily Kornheiser. How are you handling the legislature these days? How's the whole like remote meetings going? The remote meet, I feel like we're learning how to do remote meetings, um, so that's okay. good. Sort of the technological hurdle is mostly passed, and we've, um, I was part of a focus group to look at our remote voting system, and then that got rolled out to my committee today. And so that all feels like it's moving along. It's just, good. it's interesting to sit at my computer all day um, <laughs> and not have, you know, politics is a very human, um, despite what some people might think, politics is a very human vocation and mm -hmm. um it's strange to not be around my colleagues and not be able to sort of have conversations smoothly and easily and in the hallway and on the go um and so yeah it's a big transition my eyes are definitely more tired at the end of the day um we should probably all invest in those those glasses uh, that filter uh, out the blue yeah. light <laughs> yes yeah, I'm, you know, eternally grateful that I have a um, salary job and that I'm still able to do the legislative work. I don't have to be, you know, quarantined in the Capitol building with my fellow legislators, which I can imagine happening in times past. I get to be with my family. Um, yeah. Some really amazing birds out my window lately. I've never really paid attention to birds before. So, yeah, nice. moments of gratitude. Good. Yeah. yeah, good. Well, we are recording this on Wednesday. So speaking of salary jobs, mm -hmm. I am grateful for mine at the Commons, which came out today. You can uh, pick it up in a few places that are still open. Main Street, Brattleboro is one of them. Um, but also to remind folks, if you want to get the Commons in the mail, there is a way to sign up for that inside the paper. And thank you to everyone who is supporting journalism at this time. Speaking of support and having enough funding, you know, mm -hmm. one big question we have kind of hanging over our heads right now is as the economy shuts down, as people have lost their jobs or they're losing their jobs, what are we doing about paying rents and paying mortgages and what can we actually control at the state level to make sure people keep roofs over their heads? So one thing that went pretty immediately into effect is the courts, as they prioritized their caseload in order to really shrink down what they were doing and engage in um, COVID safety measures, are not hearing any eviction cases right now. And so that is a great relief to folks who might be on the edge of that. Mm -hmm. um, that doesn't mean that the proceedings will be stopped forever. It just means that means the proceedings aren't coming up in court right now. And so that's one thing that's happening. Um, and Chittenden County has come out sort of very forcefully about that, um, the, a judge there. But in other parts of the state, it's really happening just by um, scheduling circumstance, essentially. And so that is one thing that's happening. It's not enough for anyone to depend on, but it's a little bit of breathing room. It, it does take the hatchet away from the head a little bit. Exactly, exactly, <laughs> yes. Um, and so once we sort of take the next step from there, the issue gets a lot more complicated. Mm -hmm. um, and so when we think about renters um, and what relief would look like for renters, we um, immediately hear stories of all of the folks who own buildings who are paying their mortgages with that rent. Um, and then what would you know the next step look like for foreclosure um, if that rent wasn't being paid? And so, um, and then we very quickly sort of spiral um, up a tower of economic control to a bank that is out of state or a fund loaner um, that is out of state and then outside mm -hmm. of the control of Vermont. Right. And so we need another solution. <laughs> 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 um, <laughs> yes, our multi-level governmental system here, not everyone can pull the same levers. No, and I have um, heard from, you know, the Department of Financial Regulation and from the Vermont Banking Association that banks in Vermont and um, 
other lenders in Vermont, our debt holders, are being strongly encouraged to work really closely with whoever has a debt that they're struggling with. Mm -hmm. um, however, most of us don't have our debt sitting here in Vermont. So, you know, um, the link that you sent me about how the federal government is, um, you know, holding on FHA mortgages, and I've also heard that about USDA mortgages, that's a small group of mortgages. I think a lot of people in this area have those mortgages. Um, I have mm -hmm. one. And then uh, certainly a lot of my friends do. So that's one piece of the pie. Um, but most mortgages are sort of sold off somewhere, right? Right. Um, yeah, and then some people they... don't even know where their mortgages are held anymore. Absolutely. Because they're so far away. Yes. And so we can, you know, control what's happening in Vermont. We can't control can't control what's happening outside of Vermont. And so the solution beyond just sort of stopping the legal processes from happening seems to me to be to make sure that we're getting money in the pockets of people who need to pay their bills, mm -hmm. um, which seems almost too simple a response to a complicated problem. Well, and also then the question is, where's that money coming from? Mm -hmm. That is a good question, Olga. <laughs> As my dad says, money doesn't grow on trees, you know. Uh, my dad it kind of does because it's paper, but you know. It's true. And actually, you know, they actually just print it. It's not like, you know. <laughs> but um, the state of Vermont does not print money, unfortunately. And so we have a limited quantity of it. And so yeah. where that money comes from is actually from the federal government who just prints it. So... And, you know, we're in a 15-minute call today, so complex ideas are, we're being a little glib about in order to get through them, but the federal government has an enormous capacity to create money and to create funding, which they are now sending to the states in the form of the CARES Act, which just passed. Um, and a lot of that money is going straight to corporations um, to sustain themselves through this, and there is, you know, I certainly wish a lot more of it was going directly to people and to the states. Um, but there is significant funding that's also going to the state. Some of that's going to childcare, some of that's going to schools, and a huge amount of it is going to really beefing up our unemployment insurance system, as well as a few other places. And so what does it look like if everyone who has lost their job in this time, regardless of circumstance, whether that was because their business just was not earning enough because people aren't traveling or buying, or because they had to shut down from quarantine, or because they're deemed non-essential, or because someone left work because they were sick or their family was sick or their kid didn't have childcare anymore because the schools were shut down, whatever the reason for someone's economic impact in this time, they're eligible for unemployment insurance that covers their entire former paycheck, then they should be able to pay their bills right. and their rent. And that seems to me to be the best solution um, because it doesn't create, this, doesn't create a house of cards that we would then need to dig our way out of later. Mm -hmm. um, right. Because one thing we don't want to have happen, I mean, we can just say, hey, moratorium on everybody's bills, but you have to pay it all back once the quarantine is lifted. Well, then you're just playing catch up on top of catch up. Absolutely. And, and a lot of the SBA solve loans things. sort of look hmm? like that. A lot of the yeah. SBA loans that are available look like that. And they're, they're not of much benefit to most people because mm -mm. you need to be earning in order to be able to pay back a loan, which is essentially what that would be. So how close are we to making sure that people's unemployment insurance covers their entire paycheck? We are pretty close and it won't happen for all workers. It will happen for a lot of workers. So the, um, as the money comes into Vermont from the feds, um, which is sort of a complicated administrative process simultaneously, it's funny how in the video, my hands are a little cut off. Um, Simultaneously, the Department of Labor is working on the administrative side of this stuff. And so they're figuring out how for self-employed workers, will they understand what someone's income was? It's much easier when someone has a paycheck, et cetera, et cetera. So once they figure out sort of what reimbursement would look like for someone's um, previous income, whether that was salary, hourly, annually, et cetera, um, then, then a portion of that is paid for traditional unemployment benefits. And then onto that portion is added an extra $600 a month. Mm -hmm. um, and I feel like it's not $600 a month. I feel like it's $600 a week. And I just misspoke. Oh. And my notes are not in front of me. 
I um, have been hearing so it's six hundred dollars a week. It's six hundred. Oh, it's a week. Okay. Yes, I am looking. Sorry about that. Um, so it's the weekly benefits um, permitted under state unemployment insurance law, which, as I said, was a fraction of what someone's earning, and then it's plus six hundred dollars a week, and that's the federal pandemic unemployment compensation program. And so that should make a lot of people whole and the people who are not being made whole by that are likely the much higher income earners who might have a little bit more of a safety net um, or a little more leeway with their the way their bills are stacked and organized um, so, so that will really do a lot the you wanted to ask a question i was but i want you to finish what you were going to say i'm going to move on to a slightly new topic so this is like a lot of end of the day energy everyone's getting, excuse me. I know, right? Uh, so before you move on, <laughs> if someone is sitting home right now and they're thinking, uh, mm -hmm. I don't know how I'm gonna pay my rent, what yes. do they do? So right now, if you don't know how you're gonna pay your rent and you had an hourly or sal salary job at an, with an employer who considered you an employee and you got a paycheck, then you should apply for unemployment insurance and there is a lovely website to do that at and then someone will call you and finish the eligibility process with you if you are not one of those people which many vermonters are not you need to hold on for a little bit until we say okay we're ready for the self-employed workers and then you can fill out those forms in the meantime we still have all of the social services systems that are up and running to support people to stay in their homes who are in danger of losing their housing and so um, calling sevka is a great place to start with that and the existing housing agencies in our area who do this work are starting to try to pool some of those resources knowing that a lot more folks are going to um, have some struggle staying in their housing um, so that's a good temporary fix while we wait to have this extra income flow coming in people should also call their lender call their landlord have a conversation i know it's really hard to talk about this stuff when you're worried about it, um, but starting that conversation early is great. Mm -hmm. Now, if someone is talking to their landlord and they're getting no love, is there another step? You could call the tenants union, you can call legal aid, um, and then really you could try to find that funding from Sevco or another community partner. Great. Mm -hmm. And similarly, if someone is talking to their bank and not getting anywhere, you can call the Department of Financial Regulation and file a complaint there. Fantastic. Yeah. That's great mm -hmm. um, knowledge. Before we, we move on, was did you want to touch on any other topics or anything yeah. else about the evictions? The last thing I want to touch on is that there's an enormous um, sort of similar to, it's sort of the flip side of evictions, which is we have a really big housing crunch in our community and part of that really makes the price of housing be totally out of step with people's incomes. And so we have an enormous amount of money coming to the state from the federal government and most of that has to be sort of new spending. Um, it has to be new ideas that we're spending this money on. And so we have a real opportunity here to say how are we going to invest in our communities to make them more sustainable um, more resilient long term. And a big part of that is safe and healthy housing for all. And so I'm really hopeful that um, especially some of the community development block grant money can go towards that. You know, given this process so far, have you learned anything new about the Vermont economy? Is this, is this um, COVID-19 mm. teaching you anything new about the Vermont economy? Um, wow. Well. I want to name something fantastic. Really a lot of what it's done is, um, I've gone deeper into unemployment insurance benefits than I think I ever thought I would. Um, I'm very interested in the difference between sort of federal, sorry, between um, the administrative powers and the legislative powers around moving deadlines and setting deadlines and um, fees and fines and all of that. That's sort of a fascinating little thing that probably no one else other than me would be interested in. So I'm glad I'm talking about it on TV. And then um, the last thing is just what we've talked about. It's really widening the cracks of the things we're very, we were aware of and helping more people become aware of them. Um, mm -hmm. And so really hoping, you know, over the next few weeks to start some conversations there. Um, you know, when we hear complaints about, um, from folks about the personal protective equipment that they're getting, my first question is like, where is VOSHA? right mm -hmm. um and so 
really just thinking about how these systems that we have in place in Vermont um, need strengthening if we're going to have government really work for us in times of strife and struggle, as well as times of um, some level of comfort. What, what this experience is highlighting for me is something a little similar in that so often we, when we have conversations about systems or about the economy specifically, mm -hmm. we forget how human driven it is. Mm -hmm. And we, mm -hmm. we talk kind of abstractly, but we don't actually look at like, okay, person A wakes up in the morning mm -hmm. and they need to accomplish A, B, and C. Mm -hmm. And that's the economy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the essential workers and the conversations that we're having about essential workers and how they need the respect and compensation that matches their essential role. I think that's a really powerful one and I am very hopeful we can carry it forward. Well, thank you, Emily. Thank this you, is Olga. all the time we have for this bonus. You can find it on, it'll be airing on uh, WVEW 107.7 FM, LP Brattleboro's community radio station, as well as Emily's YouTube channel and BCTV, which stands for Brattleboro Community Television. And you can find us always on our Vermontitude SoundCloud page and Facebook page. I'm Olga Peters. Thank you so much. Take care, Emily. Bye, Olga. Thanks.